special special Tega Tega Supreme. Good morning, Tega. Good morning. When you offend, you just be so two times. <laughs> Good morning, Lagos. Jari. You are special to me. Tega. <laughs> Don't wash your dirty linen. <laughs> I know. All right. Lagos, please send in your comments, observations on these stories onto WhatsApp. Our WhatsApp number is 0809 And on Twitter, you can use the hashtag LockerRoom981. Thank you very much. Now, the NBA fined New Orleans Pelicans forward Anthony Davis $50,000 on Tuesday for violating a rule that prohibits players or their representatives from making public trade demands. In a statement that was announced on uh, the fine Tuesday, they said the NBA called Paul's comments on the TV show an inten intentional effort to undermine the contractual relationship between Davis and the Pelicans. The team statement on Monday included a request to the league to strictly enforce the tampering rules associated with this transaction. Yes, so here's what happened. Anthony Davis has been a subject of... Uh, transfers and you know the Lakers want Anthony Davis um, they think he'll be a good addition I think he'll be a perfect addition if he blends um, and the Lakers would all of a sudden now start looking like a team that can actually compete for the championship once you have Anthony Davis um, here's the issue he's it was New Orleans Pelicans that made him like like they gave him the opportunity they gave him the backing they gave him the support so Yes, he was a very talented player, but that city, you know, you know how they hold their own push yes. and all. Mm. All of a sudden now, um, the likes of LeBron are, are wooing him, so he thinks, let me move over. And there's nothing wrong with having ambition and going to another team that you think you can challenge for the championship. There's a problem when your agent goes on air and says that, you know, he needs to move to a new team to challenge. Now, with the NBA, they take it extra. With other people, they'll say, oh, that was that was in, done in poor taste. In NBA, there's a rule. Mm -hmm. You break that rule, you pay a fine. Exactly. <laughs> it's that simple. Um, and sometimes it's longer than the fine. There's a suspension. There are different things. But the most basic is that you pay that fine. So what, what the agent was trying to do was he was trying to push his team to let them know that this guy wants to go um so you've turned your request in but you've not made it public um trying to look like i'm the guy on this team doing all this doing all that and was like they're having none of that and what's even more i think what was more interesting is that anthony davis and lebron james shared the same agent so he already has a leg into lakers he can easily broker that deal he'll I'm take a phone call <laughs> you're, you're already putting the New Orleans Pelicans on a ba on the bad foot in negotiation when mm. it comes to negotiation because now the player wants to move. Now you have an in. There's not really much cards you will hold in hand apart from the contract. There's not much you hold in hand to keep. So he, so they did break that law. They're paying the fine. And at the end of the day, you know, with all the drama, they will still not. They may still not move. I think he's going to move at the end of the day. But I, uh, but with all the drama, everything is just done poorly. So mm. pay your fine. Well, maybe like that's what they make a decision. Right. <laughs> would, 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 would definitely let you know if indeed he pays the fine and he received my Lakers. I walked away from that coming back home and football here. Raw worries over injuries complacency. Super Eagles manager Gennot Raw has admitted his concern over injuries and complacency ahead of the Super Eagles upcoming matches in March. Rowe declared, and I quote, our program all the time is to improve the level of our super egos and to respect what they're doing in the club. It's a moment to monitor our players to see if they're fit and of course have some news also from our injured players. Like Tyrone, who is training again, but he can't stop playing. Also, Ahmed Musa, who has an injury at the moment. The match against Seychelles is not easy because everybody believes it will be won easily. That is dangerous and is a trap sometimes. I mean, he makes a fair point about the dangers of complacency and we know that South Africa paid the price for that sort of complacency despite having the, the full plethora of the, um, the first team players, they, they struggled, they couldn't get three points mm. that they needed to more or less assure uh, qualification to the uh, Cup of Nations. So on the one hand, I understand this fear. However, I think and it is a legitimate concern when you have some of the players that you would like to have yeah. Um, either injured or recovering from injury but not getting playing time because that then um, 
affects their match sharpness and their ability to perform well when you need them. Yeah. That said, I worry, I, I worry that um, General just seems to be content with working with the people that he knows and doesn't. I mean, he's not looking to challenge himself to either take a chance. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, Nigeria has qualified for the Cup of Nations already. Yeah. So why are you worried about complacency in a game that actually affords you the opportunity? to try out a whole lot of other players and that's it feeds into a criticism that people have had of this uh, manager about him being risk averse and um, him being unwilling to push the boats to, uh, uh, and, and test the limits of either the players or even his ability um, as a manager mm. so on the one hand i can understand where it's coming from but you qualified why are you worried about people who are injured? Play those who are available mm, and see try, the Try to play the new the, guys. The thing about it is, as a coach, he has a responsibility to not just manage the performance, but manage the goods, so to speak. I mean, does it end? Does the ball you end? Have... Does the ball end at the college? Okay, so wait. wait. He, he, has a full, he has a sea full of fish. And he's only worried about the fish in the freezer. He's thinking about tomorrow. He's not thinking like an extra. Yeah, no, but that's and, and, and thinking about tomorrow will mean that you have to get more people. Precisely. Because I mean the likes of Victor Moses just woke up one morning and retired. Then Mikel Obu will wake up one morning and retire tomorrow. And you have no replacement. Matches like these are what you are, are the kind of are the opportunities for you to get replacement. But do you think there's some whatever reason for him holding back? Because like you mentioned, it only makes sense that in times like this it would be great to try out the new guys, give them an opportunity to play and play against international teams. The, the simplest reason I can think of is if you're playing safe and you're using the guys who have gotten you results, your profile and your stock remains where it is and nobody's going to then be looking at you and you know but you think he signed a lot a, a, a new contract he has that job security that he's looking for Thank that you. gives you the opportunity to okay, push think, you keep saying you're thinking about the future prove that you are get these other guys and have a goal mm. Mm. all right so our next story is about uh, UFC. This is going to be interesting. So Conor McGregor has been suspended for six months and fined fifty thousand dollars for his part in the ugly scenes that marred the UFC 229 uh, performance in October. His opponent, Khabib, received a nine-month suspension and has been fined five hundred thousand dollars. Both suspensions have been backdated to the date of the Las Vegas fight. However, uh, Khabib. A suspension could be reduced to six months if you participate in an anti-bullying campaign <laughs> in Nevada. <laughs> yes, what's ridiculous? Okay, that's so own version of community service. Yes, yes, what's ridiculous about these suspensions? Um, again, let me go back to the fight. So remember that fight that Conor McGregor had with Habib, that Habib completely beat him. Mm. Um, and then Habib, after beating him, now goes into the crowd to attack his team mm. for all the abuses that put on him before the match and even during the fight. Um. So that's what happened. That's the fracas that broke out. But here's what's interesting. It was Habib that was the one that was being bullied before the fight. But, <laughs> so, but Conor McGregor won't so, be questioned. So for why that is he thing. the one going for the anti-bullying campaign wow. when it should have been Conor that's going for the anti-bullying campaign? Um, and then Habib was the one that was attacked in the ring. So they're fighting Habib for fighting after the fight in the ring. But ha but Conor McGregor was sorry. They're fighting Conor for for fighting mm. after the fight. In the ring, but Connor was in the ring trying to recover from what Habib did to him when Habib's people climbed over yes. and came in to fight him. What I, I, I don't know if they need to swap the penalties, but there's something wrong here. He was just defending himself literally because he's just been beaten by the fighter, and then people climb over to add to the beating. Um, and now he's getting fined for that. So, if you had said to me you're fining him for pushing. You know, you know, before before a fight, everybody's going to talk trash mm -hmm. or trash talk you, yeah. um, and and there there are limits. But he pushed the paper on on, on trash talking. Mm. So if you're finding him for that, for instigating <laughs> and for goading and for other things, I'll say yes. But now you're fighting him for the, you're fighting him for defending himself, and then you're giving the guy that was bullied mm. the opportunity. The to, it's just wrong. But all the same, they're just trying to pass a message at the yes. end of the day, so that no, they, so that, set, they uh, set the precedent. For yeah, they set the precedent so that people don't do this again. But they've suspended her school for one year. Wow. So, so don't, no climbing up. Uh, so. They will even be in the <laughs> venue. <laughs> so, so. Oh wow, stories, interesting stories. Gives them one year to practice for the French language. <laughs> 
how to know what fence not to climb. Not to climb, exactly. <laughs> Lagos, we'll take a break. We'll be back with more stories. You're listening to The Locker Room on Smooth 98.1. I see you know no, stylishly dodged Khabib Sonny. Yeah, I went. <laughs> there is, ah, he, he come. No, ah, no, 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 I'm like, no, no, man, no, 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 But do you know that in, in instances like this, yeah. what the belief is that he does racism? Yes. Because why is it as a person, you know how it is where black men are labeled, we're just troublemakers, or minorities mm. are labeled as troublemakers, and usually when you get into a fight with a white person, you get more punishment, even if they're the ones that started the fight yeah. and all that. So I don't know whether to um, highlight that, but usually that's usually the case because it is so obvious. Yeah, bro, but, but Habib started his fight. So this fine was for me. His fine was just fine. I'm even upset that they backdated their fines because well, yeah, times, but, so they, but why would they take him yeah. to a fancy the movie? Okay, okay, they shouldn't. Yeah, they should. I think they shouldn't have taken. So it was mentioned they should have. Yeah. Back, they shouldn't have. For me, they shouldn't have backdated it. But what it is that the the. Taking him to the anti bullying campaign is the one I don't understand. Oh I cannot understand it. Scotty was the one. So I think the only other the only other way I can look at it is not so much about him being viewed as a bully. Somewhere in this, I see them looking at look, this guy is, is the future of UFC. Um, Conor McGregor having Has been gone. properly beaten. Yes. It's not the kind of person that you want to take to maybe kids and all of that stuff and say bullying is what. Yeah. It's like, how would you be bullying? You be His bullying. attitude <laughs> alone. <laughs> you let them completely. So no, he's very different from kids. Huh? Conor McGregor. Yeah. He's the sweetest person. No, no, he's sweet as a rankings, of course. But when he meets his mates, I want to be So I think. On the one hand, we're looking at Khabib as this is the guy that okay. is probably going to push this, this uh, category of UFC. Face. So he now, he now has to try and brand him. It's a way of sort of repackaging him. And yeah, all because the way he fought that fight, even if he was right in initially and yeah. in getting offended, yeah. he became the person that was yeah. wrong. Yeah. Because he started a brawl and people were, I mean, people were hit. You can imagine that I don't know how to fight and I'm just there to watch and then someone gives me slap. Wow. I wake up tomorrow morning now. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, I think I think that's that's the next best thing I can think, think of, of for them to take him to that Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also maybe because it's the first, um, the fifth story of bro, a man who's Sammy. survived, Sammy. who's gone through the bullying, you and see the people if that you see, see will we'll tell them like him. Yeah, yeah. You know, he, yeah. yeah. About the mouse, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. All the, the minorities yeah. and all that stuff who would be able to identify and relate to matter is he's the one that was bullied, the guy was just quiet, so just quiet, waiting to win the fight. Well, well, wait, as soon as he won that fight, like this, he just... Why you try to bully somebody who was training with girls? I mean, like, when they tell you that he has been training with bears, does, is that more yeah, advice? See, see, yeah. it's a superior. It's, no, no, it's yeah. trash. See, that trash talking sells fight. Oh, yeah, it's no, just yeah, that, yeah. that trash talking sells fight, and Connor does it, but he, when you start, you know, because when you bring someone's religion into it, yeah, everybody's yeah. sensitive, right? Like yeah, I told yeah. someone yesterday, yeah. said, oh, you, person just said, hey, you're just sensitive because they're talking about Bible. But I said before, I'm going to be sensitive because you're talking about the Bible and it's my faith. Mm -hmm. You know, you can make mistakes with politics yeah. and, and records, but the Bible is different. So once you bring in somebody's faith, and so yeah. push that envelope just to type it. Yeah. Yeah. You can't right. check them because you won't be able to see what happened. I mean, because he trashed up me with that. You checking them downstairs. Okay, thanks. <laughs> well, that's part of the game. That's part of the game. I mean, you're a boxer, you cannot trash talk. Like, you're a boxer. And they're like this. Oh, no, they're some, probably there, looking at the other ones. Yeah, there's some boxes that don't trash talk. Yeah, yeah, there's some boxes that don't trash talk. Marie Pacquiao. I was going to ask Pacquiao. Pacquiao doesn't trash talk. Pacquiao doesn't trash talk. Pacquiao doesn't trash talk. Pacquiao doesn't trash talk. Even, even, even uh, this, guy, this guy at the moment, uh, Anthony Joshua. He doesn't. He, do, he, he tries he, yeah. his best. He can't be, that guy can't be a volcano. He can't be a volcano, but when you watch him, when you watch his exterior, he's he's you see somebody who has worked a lot on mm -hmm. self-control. Mm -hmm. He waits to take out his frustration on you in, in the game. fight itself. He doesn't mm -hmm. believe it. He, builds, yeah, he, he, he bottles a lot of his rage and then and channels, channels it in the way. In the fight, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think this last time, this, this last time... Uh, 10 seconds in. Was the last where the <coughs> yeah. Alright, still silence. Mics are up.
We love our Lagos, even on days that it's rainy. Very <laughs> rainy. All over. It's Wednesday, Lagos, and you're listening to The Locker Room. It's a part of Smooth Breakfast with Aya. And Valentine. And today, of course, we're joined by Uncle Brew Brew. I call him all that very fondly. His name is Professor Listics. He's joining Tega uh, this morning. Pronounce, pronounce Khabib Sonny. <laughs> Um, no, next, next time. So, Khabib <laughs> Noma Gomedal. Happy now. Well done. Ready, I want to give ready. a round of applause. Okay, moving on very swiftly to the next. Um, our class captain is pointing. Okay. Pep Guardiola says title race is not over despite Newcastle loss. Um, Pep Guardiola said anything can still happen in the Premier League title race after Manchester City were surprisingly beaten 2 1 by Newcastle. Guardiola said, well, it's a lot of points they go on to win, but we're in January. It's not April or May. There's still many games and anything can happen. That's football. A lot of teams are playing many reasons. Um, teams to stay in the Premier League, others to go to the Europa League for the Champions League. In our case, every game, we have to do our best to be there, try to not give up, move forward and try another time and another time. Sorry, that sounds to me like a man who knows, who has a sneaky feeling that that game was when they lost the chance to um, retain this trophy. And, you know, I think the, the picture, uh, there was a, the camera panned to him at the end of that, towards the end of that game. And you could see, he was, I mean, uh, nobody saw this result coming, mm -hmm. especially considering how early um, Manchester City um, scored. One thought that this was just going to be a round, but credit to Newcastle and Rafa Benitez, who has suffered a lot um, of lack of investment from the owner and there's been talk about him being frustrated even his last press conference when he was asked whether there's a like there was a likelihood he was going to leave yeah. certainly nothing is off the table you know so it is a major look Benitez has been a bit of has carried out a major miracle at Newcastle yeah. and getting some of these very interesting results has been a testament to his players and to his tactical ability yeah. good performance solid um, defensively, um, yes, the goals were products of uh, some defensive um, lapses. But for every team to score, you are either absolutely brilliant, or that the other team makes a defensive or tactical mistake. That's how you, that's how games are won. Yeah. So nobody should uh, try to diminish uh, this uh, three points for Newcastle. It's important for their stru their struggle to stay in the Premier League. What things now on the table? Five <coughs> points are above. Uh, critically, above for, critically for critically uh, for Manchester City, yes, uh, it's still a long way to go. But does Liverpool look like a team that is going to drop the ball when they have it so tight in their hands? <laughs> Something tells me that it's unlikely. But and I would say that this is probably the day. Depending on their results, uh, Liverpool has against um, uh, Crystal Palace. Yeah. This is probably the day Manchester City lost. This All right. We have messages on WhatsApp. Now, George sent in this one from my judge. He says, Anthony Anthony Davis uh, makes that money, $50,000 in eight minutes on the floor for his current salary. Rich Paul and uh, Lebron James own Clark Sports, and Anthony Davis is signed to Clark Sports. Done deal, if you ask me, he says. <laughs> Timothy Victor sent this one from Malawi International. He says, Got out raw complain about injury, worried in the team. He would have qualified for AFCON. He can make use of your, our home base players to execute our last match. I do not want to hear this excuse from him again. <laughs> and it also adds to Manchester City story. It says Manchester City just successfully handed over the EPL to Liverpool last night. At least Liverpool fans that was born in the late 90s will have the feeling of how to celebrate EPL trophy now. Wow. Yeah. Sherry Fulu Alekiakimi said, but Tega, what I don't understand is why one person, why look for one person, why find one person fifty thousand dollars and the other five hundred thousand, and then Pep is just having false hopes. The title is there for Liverpool to win against all odds. I think Liverpool will lift the Premiership this season. And I asked the same question about the fifty thousand disparity between. Yeah, the two uh, one person, one person started the fight. He won a fight in <laughs> yes, now he won a fight and then came out to start oh, another oh, fight. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, <laughs> so he's, he's, he's the instigator. Yeah, so he have the heavier fans. Tony from Agodo sent in this one. Says all this noise on Anthony Davis to the Lakers. We were still not ensure them beating Golden State were without <laughs> another superstar. Golden State Warriors top three players is Durant, Curry, and Clay. Can they can all average seventy PPG? once the playoffs start. This is without contributions from Draymond and uh, Bougie Cousins as well. It says LA still needs carry. Unfortunately, GSW is just too stacked for victory. It's just a shame that both teams are in the West. First of all, Bougie Cousins will get ejected. 
<laughs> at least twice in the playoffs. <laughs> twice, I can almost guarantee you because he's just going to abuse somebody or fight oh somebody boy. else. Oh boy. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Let's continue to the next story. Now, Klopp, Jürgen Klopp, has an impressive trophy haul as a manager, having won two Bundesliga titles at former club uh, with former club Borussia Dortmund. Uh, but in his few years on Messi's side, he has come to realize how important success is to the Liverpool fans. In his words, Klopp said, It is not the biggest stress in the world, but it's so intense and so important, and all in a short time. Football is not the most important thing in the world, but at these moments, of course, it feels like that because we have nothing else to do. It's not easy to enjoy, but I love what I do, he said. I guess um, at, at this point in time, he'd be enjoying. He has an opportunity to go seven points clear today. Mm. Um, and, and so he, he looks like he's going to get it. Um, I, I, don't, I don't want to say... I, because of the way the, the Premier League can turn out, um, I don't want to say it's guaranteed three points, yes. but it's guaranteed three points. You see, when the team that you're competing against plays before you, sometimes there's a slight advantage of knowing what you have to do. Um, because the other team is setting the pace, you're just reacting to what the other team is doing. So now you know that if you win or draw, you extend the gap just a little bit more. So they know exactly what they're going to do and they're going to come into the game like that and that's how I think they're going to win. I, I, I would say this, the difference in Manchester City and Liverpool is that, yes, Manchester Manchester teams have bad days. Like yesterday was a bad day for Manchester City. They just couldn't seem to find that second goal. Um, they weren't passing the ball well. They weren't playing very well. Their day is like that. The thing about it is that this season, Liverpool has found a way to get the desired results from games that they've struggled in. Mm -hmm. Manchester City have not always done that. So they've had three games where they had bad days and they've lost on those three days. Liverpool have had days when they've had bad days and they've won on those games. Like the game against Crystal Palace when they won 4-3. Mm -hmm. um, it was a bad day for Liverpool, but they still managed to push the envelope to get that result. I keep saying pushing the envelope because I'm thinking of somebody that pushed the envelope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they still managed to push and then they got the result. So bad bad games they they've ground out results Manchester City haven't and that's why the, the title race is now firmly in their hands and it's theirs to lose. So let's see how they play tonight um and if they get all three points. All right. Theirs to lose will be on the lookout. Liverpool Man City who's going to take the crown. I mess with Ozil Digo was expected of him in Arsenal's win over Card in Sesenai Emery. Ozil Digo was expected of him on his first start since Boxing Day in Arsenal's 2-1 victory over Cardiff. I think you said, you said something about this the last time on Monday. He said, he worked like we wanted and we said it was good. We are happy. We struggled a lot in this match, but it's a very important three points. Newcastle won, Burnley drew with Manchester United and we won. <laughs> yeah, um, yes, they won, but the, it wasn't what you'd call the most enjoyable game either for the fans at home and even for the players, it was a labored performance. And not labored that they ground out the result. It was labored to the, on, the, on the edge of lethargic. Every player, uh, he had an Arsenal team that was extremely compacted. There was no width. Even when Alex Iwobi came, he offered no width. Um, the, the wide, in the wide areas, only Sierra Palacina had made an attempt to <laughs> offer that width. And Nick Steiner was poor. Um, um, Karl Jankinson, Jenkinson, who played his first MLE game in two years, uh, was brought in probably to offer that width, but he seemed to come in and just be like a deer in headlights. Um, it took for finally the penalty that they should have probably gotten in the first half yeah. to, to, to get through, and a fantastic individual performance from, like I said, to get the second goal. Again, defensive frailties caused them to concede a goal, which could have made things a little bit nervy. Three points that they def desperately need, considering who they're playing against on Sunday. All right. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to take a break now. We'll be back uh, to treat more stories and read your messages here on the Locker Room 981 from Smooth 98.1. How many minutes do we have? Oh, they're playing on Monday. Manchester City. On Manchester City. Yeah. Should we say that they're going to lose? Yes. Should we call this one? Yes, yes, yes. No, yes, but yes. if Newcastle yes. beat Manchester City, maybe they'll lose the streak. Maybe. This is... 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 This Mm -hmm. wait, wait. Look, the thing about big teams is that they prepare for big teams. They don't yes. usually prepare yeah, for small that, teams. And, and usually small teams beat them. Add to the fact that Arsenal at the moment cannot buy 
is a defense, a consistent backline. They've chopped and changed because of injuries yeah, several years. Yeah. Even without the injuries, That's when he looked devastated. Um, was it who um, was down yesterday? Um, Mustafi. Mustafi. Yeah. And he looked, the devastation on his face was like... And I promise you, if they play that backline yeah. against Manchester City yeah, in 15 minutes, 15 minutes, <laughs> the game will be over. For me, eh, I don't even think it's just, I don't think it's the lack of, of personnel per se. I also think it's the way it's training, the way they line up. So, and I picked up this instance like in two matches. So, start from the midfield. That midfield yesterday was horrible. So, you had Ozil, um, Torreira, no, no, and then he went up for a movie. I'm, 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 okay. Ozil, Ozil, Torreira, <laughs> Genduzi, and um, it will be on the pitch. And you had Obomeyang have things to come to the center circle to touch the ball. That's in what planet do you have those four guys? Yeah. And you're still having your striker who both, plays, both strikers so yeah, who play on the shoulder to too. The so the, the midfield is not functioning, it's not doing its work offensively. You say, okay, maybe because they're sitting deep to cover defensively. Yeah. Efia, how did Pobaba get the third goal? He ran past Genduzi. Genduzi was like, oh, my hair is long. The wind is taking it. And Pobaba was going. And then Pobaba passes him and then he does like this. Who is supposed to chase him? Me, that I'm watching in Africa. So they're not falling back and they're not closing the spaces. Because if you close the space, you, you, you make the person on the ball to have to play another pass yes. or look for another option yeah. by which time your defense would have set up but they don't do that so they're not closing space they're not picking up men they're just lining up and as it also comes from what they do in training because if you're watching them in training you're saying why are you not covering that guy why are you not running to cover this space because sometimes it's very stupid you see two arsenal players like somebody's coming with the ball here now somebody should run to him here but as soon as this person runs to him here another person should move here they don't do that. The pers- this person will run to him here to cover him, and this place will now be left open because nobody's moving here because everybody's now moving to the center to try and cover the one or two lame people. They're not doing their work in training. It's the coach. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> 10 seconds. Guess what time it is? 8.44 and 6 seconds. Just read messages. Messages, yeah. Studio. Yes, we're back for the last minute of sports inside of the locker room here on Smooth 98.1. We have your messages in, uh, so let's quickly go through them. Emma from Akoka sent this one. It says, Dear Manchester United, since Ole's return, you people have been spoiled with rice and stew like Onyocha. Please adjust your taste buds and manage this draw soup. It's very <laughs> nutritious. And then he says, Anything can happen, Abby. Does Guardiola mean Liverpool can extend their lead? My heart goes tickets that were torn on in Rome. This guy's on another level, but we appreciate you for your messages. And then, uh, no, please, this is not the show. Somebody is meant to send a message to Shola. But anyway, Nathan Njoku said this one. It says, people coming now and saying Liverpool will win the EPL are too late. We said it before now, not just because City lost. So keep your comments and praises to yourselves. We celebrate by ourselves. Nathan, Nathan is very (laughs) That's the last message today uh, to be taken on the locker room. 91. Special thanks to Tega. Find out on Twitter at Tega Supreme or at LIS International for the updates on ladies in sports and brutalistics. Our uncle, Bruno, <laughs> is at brutalistics with an X at the end. I and I will be here for the we'll final hour, exactly, for Smooth Breakfast. Yeah. And on uh, Lagos Talks 981 will be here at 9, 9 o'clock, 9 to 10 a.m. or 9 to just before 10. Mm. Keep your comments coming in. We'll be talking about something really, really interesting, something that took your interest during Fresh Deep Press. We'll yeah. be right back. Exactly. Good morning. People have not decided this story. Where?